Welcome to Learning Knockout JS, brought to you by Pact Publishing. My name is Robert Gott. I've been a software developer since 1998 and have spent much of my career as an instructor and mentor. I'm really excited to be a part of this video course because Knockout JS is a tool that I use daily and I firmly believe that you'll love it as much as I do. In this video, we're going to take a look at the topics covered in this course and we'll examine some obstacles to building data-driven websites. Then we'll highlight some features used in Knockout JS. And lastly, we'll preview the sample project that we'll be building throughout this course. As web developers, we've all been faced with the task of interacting with data through HTML. Whether it's simply displaying a value retrieved from a database or posting a form for processing, at some point many of our user interfaces will need to interact with the server. With the introduction of Ajax, much of the work we perform to build web-based applications takes place on the client side. Once our applications become non-trivial, though, we often experience a lot of bloated and unmanageable code intermingled in our HTML. That's where Knockout.js comes in. Knockout.js, or just Knockout, is a client-side data binding library that greatly simplifies the task of building data-aware web user interfaces. What used to take a lot of effort now only takes a relatively small amount of script and a minimal amount of markup. By using simple attributes in your HTML, you can establish a connection between UI elements and your JavaScript business objects. The connection isn't just one way, either. Once you have an association between a UI element and your business object, changes you make to the business objects are reflected in the UI and changes in the UI are propagated to the underlying business objects. This two-way data binding is where Knockout JS really shines. To help demonstrate the many great features of Knockout JS, we're going to build a media library application throughout this course. If you're like me, you probably have a lot of friends who borrow your books and movies. Most of the time my things are returned, but there's an untold number of items I'll probably never see again. My problem is that I forget who borrowed my things, so I never remember to ask for them to be returned. So what we're going to do throughout this video course is build a media tracking application so that we can keep an inventory of our media assets and record who may have borrowed them. We'll build data entry screens for our catalog of media assets as well as a screen to manage our contacts. Then we'll build a dashboard that will allow us to see what we have in the inventory what's been borrowed and by whom, and when our items are supposed to be returned. Along the way, we'll explore the architectural challenges of building such an application and how the design patterns encouraged by Knockout can help us. In the first section of this course, we're going to explore the two software design patterns on which Knockout JS is built, the Model View View Model pattern, or MVVM, and the Observer pattern. We'll also cover the JavaScript module pattern as this will be used throughout this course. In the second section, we'll begin building our sample project and introduce you to one-way data binding, where you will use Knockout to display data on the page. Two-way data binding is covered in the third section, and we'll start adding data entry forms to our sample project. In section four, we'll tackle the concept of data context. This can be tricky to understand at first, but it's central to the MVVM pattern in Knockout JS. By the end of Section 4, though, you'll be a pro. Section 5 walks you through computed observables. This is a powerful feature of Knockout JS that I think you will really enjoy. With the basics firmly in hand, Section 6 will examine what it takes to extend Knockout JS for a variety of scenarios. We'll create custom functions, extenders, and custom bindings that will really make your application shine. To end this course, we will spend Section 7 looking at some of the advanced things that you can do with Knockout JS. This section is to let you know what's possible and how to take what you've learned to the next level. To get the most out of this video course, you will need to have a basic understanding of HTML and JavaScript. You will also need a text editor, or preferably, an HTML and script IDE like Microsoft Visual Studio. You will also need to have installed a modern browser, the most recent versions of Internet Explorer or Google Chrome will do nicely, and of course, access to the Internet. I hope that you're as excited as I am. Knockout JS is truly a game changer for web development and really makes programming data-driven applications a lot of fun. So let's get started.